Welcome back to the Real Life Pharmacology Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Christensen, pharmacist, and today we're going to cover tricyclic antidepressants. And the first uh, three examples that come to mind of drugs that are uh, maybe more commonly used in clinical practice are amitriptyline, brand name Elevil, nortriptyline, brand name Pamelor, and doxepin, brand name Sinequan. So tricyclic antidepressants are really older drugs. Uh, They've got a little bit more of a vast uh, side effect profile, and we're certainly going to cover that today. Uh, But first, I want to start mechanistically. So uh, from a mechanism perspective, the primary mode of action of these medications is they inhibit the reuptake of serotonin, Uh, as well as may have some activity on norepinephrine as well. And these levels are changed in the brain, and these levels are increased generally in the brain. And if you think of other drug classes like SSRIs or SNRIs, serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, uh, they definitely cross over and have similar activities Uh, to those classes of medications. However, there also are other mechanisms with these, uh, with the tricyclic antidepressants. So some of them definitely have uh, older generation antihistamine activity as well. And we'll kind of cover some of the issues that may uh, prop up because of that uh, mechanism and the drugs being uh, older anticholinergic type meds. So with that, let's get into the uh, uses for the medications. Uh, tricyclics may see it used for depression. These drugs are not first line uh, due to the side effect profile. Uh, may see them used for various pain syndromes. So a couple of classic examples, uh, nerve type pain or neuropathy you may see them used for. Uh, fibromyalgia is another example uh, that you may see them used for. Other behavioral health issues, uh, maybe rarely anxiety, uh, PTSD. Sometimes you'll see them used for insomnia. Oftentimes it's maybe kind of an add-on bonus uh, type effect. So for instance, maybe a patient has fibromyalgia and it's causing them to not sleep very well at night. Because these drugs are sedating, that might be kind of a dual purpose uh, to try to use one of the tricyclic antidepressants. Uh, one other thing you may see them used for is itch. I would say that's more so with doxepin. It's got a little bit more antihistamine maybe activity uh, than some of the other agents there as far as the tricyclics, um, but you know, rarely you, you might see it used for that. Now let's get into those side effects a little bit deeper. So anticholinergic side effects, remember the term SLUDS, S-L-U-D. And with SLUD or SLUDS, Uh, You've got to remember salivation. So these drugs inhibit salivation, can cause dry mouth. They can inhibit lacrimation and cause dry eyes. They can also contribute to urinary retention. So that's what the U is for. So again, kind of drying up, holding fluid back is kind of the good way to remember. And again, uh, diarrhea is the the D, or excuse me, defecation is the D. They do not cause diarrhea. They cause drying up. They cause constipation. Sorry about that. Sorry for the clarification. So again, sluds can't salivate, can't lacrimate, can't urinate, or can't defecate. Okay. So another term, another way to remember this is can't spit, see, pee, or poop. So some people like it either way. Um, So I just thought I'd throw it out there for you so you have it anyway. Uh, Some patient education points with these medications. Uh, Generally, they're going to take a while to work. Now, the exception might be uh, with the sedative property. So if if you see somebody on these medications specifically for sleep, that should work pretty quickly. Uh, If you see the medication being used for pain, uh, neuropathy, that type of thing, it might work a little more quickly than, let's say, for depression. 
but generally you're probably going to want to educate uh, your patients that is it's going to take a little while uh, for that medication to uh, take hold and start providing benefit but those side effects that i talked about those are going to prop up immediately here so a few other side effects i definitely wanted to mention because really the side effect profile limits the use of these medications so sexual dysfunction can happen that can be really problematic uh, especially in our and bothersome in our younger patient population, definitely for sure. Uh, but often, you know, oftentimes can bother uh, older patients too. Um, that sedating property from a patient education standpoint, you definitely got to alert them as far as driving and things, tasks that may take good focus and attention, especially as they're getting used to the medication. Uh, in our elderly population more specifically confusion and fall risk can really ramp up with these medications and the tricyclic antidepressants are generally discouraged uh, to use in our elderly population again i've definitely seen them used in geriatrics but again it's typically more of a last line uh, type of thing because of all those side effects anticholinergic effects confusion, falls, sedation, and, and all those risks. Now, as a clinical pharmacist, when I'm reviewing a medication list, I definitely look at medications that show up in the prescribing cascade. So if you recall, the prescribing cascade is simply adding a medication to treat a side effect of another medication. So tricyclic antidepressants give me a perfect opportunity to explain this. So as I'm looking at a medication list, and if I see something like artificial tears, artificial saliva, uh, medications for BPH like alpha blockers, uh, tamsulosin, 5-alpha uh, reductase inhibitors like finasteride or proscar, meds being used for BPH, anticholinergics can exacerbate that and worsen that. Same thing with constipation, which anticholinergics and tricyclics can cause. If you see a patient on a lot of Miralax, uh, Docusate, Senna, you know, all these are, are kind of tipping you off to look at that medication list and make sure they're not on a TCA that has anticholinergic side effects. So just a little clinical practice pearl to keep in mind there. As you're reviewing a patient medication list, keep an eye out for some of those trigger meds that may be blocking or covering up side effects from other medications. And I will tell you, in working with patients, uh, sometimes it's a real big challenge to tease out what the patient is actually taking at home because a lot of these medications are over the counter. So, you know, artificial tears, uh, artificial saliva, constipation medications, these meds are all available over the counter. And if you don't specifically ask, oftentimes patients don't really feel like over the counter medications matter. So, definitely would encourage you to ask about those medications. It can definitely uh, tip you off as far as anticholinergic side effects go from the tricyclic antidepressants. Let's take a quick break from our sponsor and all will cover drug interactions when we get back. Meded101.com slash store has a growing list of resources for the hungry nurse practitioner, physician's assistant, pharmacist, pharmacy student, as far as our pharmacy programs we have, we've got recorded webinars, practice exams, and biostatistics review as well. So check it out for NAPLEX, BCGP, BCPS, BCACP certification, prep material, meded101.com slash store. Let's finish up here on drug interactions with the tricyclic antidepressants. Drug interactions, when I think of this class of medications... Uh, I think of their effects as well as the effects of other medications um, that can be similar or can overlap. So uh, first thing I think of is confusion. Uh, again, I work mostly in geriatrics, but TCAs having that anticholinergic effects can block the effects of acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. 
So an exa classic example here is denepazil or Aricept, used to help with dementia and memory problems. Well, the tricyclic antidepressants can oppose the effects and block the effects of those dementia medications. So really important to remember that in a patient that may be presenting as confused or other things going on, um, we may be uh, have, having counter-opposing effects there with one another. Uh, other things I think about, uh, sedative properties. So uh, if you've got a patient on benzodiazepines, if you've got a patient on opioids, if you've got a patient on other sleepers, we can kind of have this cumulative sedative effect. Uh, constipation is another one where we can have kind of a cumulative effect. Uh, if we're on other antihistamines, if we are on uh, some of the calcium channel blockers like diltiazem, verapamil, good examples where both those medications can cause constipation and maybe really cause some significantly troublesome uh, issues with our patients. Uh, QTC prolongation is a risk uh, with patients. So keep in mind maybe patients who have trouble with arrhythmias already already have a prolonged uh, QT interval. Maybe they're on antiarrhythmics like amiodarone, for example, or other uh, QTC prolonging agents like antipsychotics or quinolone antibiotics. Uh, so another thing to kind of keep in mind as far as drug interactions go. We also like to keep an eye on anticholinergic load. So when we're reviewing that medication list, uh, keep an eye out for some of the over-the-counters, some of the older antihistamines, uh, Benadryl, diphenhydramine being a classic, classic example. Uh, doxylamine is another anticholinergic medication that can have similar effects, side effects to TCAs, um, found in a lot of cough and cold preparations sometimes. So definitely ask our patients what they're taking. Make sure you're looking uh, at those over-the-counters as well because they can have a lot of similar um, kind of cumulative effects uh, to those TCAs. I think that wraps up the episode for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed the, the podcast. If you're listening to us on iTunes, uh, definitely leave us a, a rating and review. We greatly appreciate that. Uh, if you like the content, you're, you'll definitely enjoy the, the content at meded101.com slash store, our sponsor here. And um, take care. Uh, thanks for listening and have a great rest of your day.